वेलकम टू इंजीनियरिंग फंडा फैमिली दिस वीडियो इज अ पार्ट ऑफ नेटवर्क थियरी लेक्चर सीरीज एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई बी गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ पोल्स एंड जीरोज इन नेटवर्क फंक्शन नाउ सी इन दिस वीडियो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट मी टेल यू वॉट इज दैट विच आई बी गोइंग टू कवर सो फर्स्ट आई एक्सप्लेन यू वॉट इज ट्रांसफर फंक्शन बेस्ड ऑन दैट आई एल एक्सप्लेन यू हाउ टू आइडेंटिफाई नंबर ऑफ पोल्स एंड नंबर ऑफ जीरोज After that, I'll explain you how to identify location of poles and zeros. Then we will see how to identify stability by poles and zeros. And then, at last, I'll solve two problems based on poles and zeros for identification of stability of system. So let us try to understand first what is transfer function. So my dear students, transfer function that is a ratio of output to input so whenever you have any electrical network at that time whatever response that you are getting with respect to input then the ratio of response with respect to input that will be transfer function of electrical network now once you have transfer function how to identify number of poles and number of zeros let us try to understand that so my dear students let us say transfer function is h of s that is output c of s divided by input r of s now i am just assuming one transfer function with polynomial so in numerator if i say i am having a n s to the power n plus a n minus 1 s to the power n minus 1 plus up to a 1 s to the power 1 minus 1 means s to the power 0 means a1 right similarly with denominator let us say we are having bm s to the power m plus bm minus 1 s to the power m minus 1 plus up to b1 see this is how let us say we have two polynomial one is numerator polynomial and second is denominator polynomial so my dear students if you observe numerator polynomial which is having power n right and if you observe denominator polynomial that is having power m so what it means it means that for numerator polynomial power n is there which means there are n number of zeros in this transfer function so power n in numerator explains there are n number of zeros and if you observe denominator that is having power m so what it explains it explains that there are m number of poles so see numerator polynomial's power explains number of zeros and denominator polynomial's power that explains number of poles right now my dear students what i'll do is i'll explain you transfer function by location of poles and zeros so as i have told you transfer function is what output divided by input right so if transfer function that is given in terms of roots right like you see here numerator polynomial is having s to the power n power so how many roots will be there with numerator polynomial there will be n roots so let us say s minus z1 s minus z2 up to s minus z n number of roots are there with numerator polynomial and with denominator polynomial it defines poles right and here power is m so let us say there are m number of roots those are like s minus p1 s minus p2 up to s minus pm then you see these roots that explains location of zeros and poles right so see this zeros and poles locations that we can identify by having roots of polynomial numerator polynomials roots will identify location of zeros and denominator polynomials roots that will identify locations of poles right now my dear students i'll explain you how to identify stability 
so for stability identification location of poles are very essential now to explain you stability you see this is imaginary axis which is j omega and this is real axis which is sigma now how to identify stability so here you just observe this is left half plane and this is right half plane and this is imaginary axis right so if poles are there in left half plane you can say system is stable if poles location that is there in right half plane then you can say system is unstable and my dear students if poles location that is there on imaginary axis right in that case we can say system is marginally stable and see at origin here we have center at origin if we have one pole then you can say system is marginally stable but if you have more than one pole at origin then system will be unstable so locations of poles and zeros that plays essential role to understand whether given system is stable or not right so my dear students first of all you will have to identify location by identifying roots numerator roots are giving you location of zeros and denominator roots are giving you locations of poles right now i'll give you some examples so that will be giving you clear idea about how to identify stability for system so let me write one question here first now here we are given with function f of t that is e to the power minus t right and question is to identify stability so i'll explain you stability calculation in terms of time domain as well as in terms of laplace domain so you see here f of t that is e to the power minus t so if you see that on axis then e to the power minus t that will start from 1 at time t is equals to 0 and it will decrease exponentially right so this function that is e to the power minus t now with this function what will happen you see as if t is going towards infinity what will happen this function f of t at infinity 1 divided by infinity will be 0 so function will go towards 0 so what is happening bounded input is giving you bounded output means output is not going towards infinity right so you can say this system is stable right b i b o means bounded input bounded output means if you go towards infinite time output is going towards 0 so output is happening in bounded region right so we can say system is stable but it is very easy to identify that in terms of frequency domain you see this f of t that is e to the power minus t so in laplace domain e to the power minus t will be 1 divided by s plus 1 right so you see what you can say is here denominator is having one root and that is identifying pole right so pole is there at s is equals to minus 1 right so if you observe that in s plane then you see this is origin and s is equals to minus 1 is having pole so you should represent pole at s is equals to minus 1 and pole is represented by cross symbol right now you see one pole that is there on lhp right left half plane so what it indicates this system is stable right I have already explained you see if poles are there on left half plane then system is stable if it is there on right half plane then system is unstable on axis it is marginally stable and at origin if more than one pole is there then system is unstable so based on this you can say system is stable as per pole is there on LHP 
let me give you one more problem so this will gives you more resolution now i am taking simple problem to explain you the concept right so here f of t that is e to the power t that is given so let us plot that in time axis first so you see f of t is e to the power t so at 0 it will be 1 at time t is equals to 0 it will be 1 and you see as time increases it will increase exponentially right it will increase exponentially like this so this is exponential function e to the power t now you see what will happen as if time t is going towards infinity what will happen this function f of t that will go towards infinity right so you can say it does not give you bounded input bounded output why the reason is output is going towards infinity so you can say we don't have bounded input bounded output so system is unstable now my dear students if you want to identify stability in terms of laplace domain then you see it is quite easy laplace domain of e to the power t that is 1 divided by s minus 1 right so based on denominator we can identify location of pole and pole is there at 1 right root is there at s is equals to 1 so i can say pole is there at 1 so if you plot that on s plane then you can identify stability so you see this is origin this is real axis here we are having 1 and pole is there at 1 so here pole is there so by cross symbol i should represent pole and you see this pole that is there on rhp right half plane so for right half plane if any pole is there you can say system is unstable right so see in time domain we need to find functions range but in laplace domain by just identifying location of poles we can identify stability of the system so my dear students it is very easy to analyze systems response by using laplacian function and by observing location of poles and zeros we can understand stability of the system so that is what the main significance which is there with poles and zeros in function stability i hope you have understood this thank you so much for watching this video